think about work decisions you made last year. Is there enough funding to manage all properties ideally? How many projects are completed on time and on budget? How do you know the decisions you made today are good for years to come? There is an approach, well tested in industries and widely applied, that can help you reduce risk, save time, money, and make sound decisions in profound ways. This is what this video is about the geographic approach for real property management. My name is Guan Yu. I'm a GIS professional working at Esri Canada. I help leaders like you to understand the art of possible with geospatial data and technologies. Geographic approach is a way of problem solving that integrates and organizes relevant but disparate information in the crucial context of location. What does it mean? While well, you're listening in from somewhere, there are many things that will impact how your day will go. There's your physical environment. Maybe there's roof leak or malfunctioning HVAC system. Your natural environment. A snowstorm just buried your car or a hurricane is sweeping through. There are people you're interacting with. Their skills, tasks, their agenda. There are also events. A safety emergency, falsely trigger fire alarm, and so on. Based on where you are, these factors will change, and so will your day. You see, these aspects of your situation seem to exist on their own and are measured differently. Until you have a full grasp of all of them, your plan for the day could take a very unexpected turn. The geographic approach is about integrating and organizing various information through location so you have a 360 view. When you're working with others, the geographic approach helps you build consensus with people because you're all looking at the same contextual information. This integrated common view allows you to plan more intelligently, mitigate risks of cost overruns, and make sound decisions for a more resilient and cost-effective asset investment plan. Here are three steps to adopt the geographic approach. Number one, map out your data. Seeing data on a map gives you instant, intuitive insights. Number two, incorporate location technology into your operational workflows. This means your fuel crew have live situational awareness based on their location, and they can directly update data from the field. Number three, leverage maps and the process of creating maps to build consensus and break silos. The geographic approach has much more to offer than the end products. It is a framework you leverage to tell compelling stories, create common grounds, and accelerate collaboration. Before I dive into each aspect, let's clarify some terminologies. We talked about the geographic approach. It's a way of thinking and problem solving that integrates data by location. I'll also talk about GIS, which stands for Geographic Information System. It is an IT system with digital tools that creates, manages, maps, and analyzes all types of data. GIS is what you will use to implement the geographic approach. Lastly, I'll be referring to geospatial tools. These are specific software products in GIS that help users finish a series of tasks, such as collecting data or modeling scenarios. Just like buildings or roads, Data is an asset you own and manage. It has a real cost as it plays a vital role in the total cost of asset ownership. To manage data well, you need to know where they are to begin with. You may know they're somewhere in your different systems or in people's spreadsheets. Accessing and making sense of all this data holistically is challenging. A good place to start is mapping out the data. By mapping out, I mean literally putting your data on a digital interactive map. Whether it's a facility or a stretch of road or a point of interest, seeing data on a map instantly lights up the pattern, allowing you to ask questions that you didn't know there could be an answer. Let me show you an example. Let's say I'm asked to advise on the real property strategy for the federal government. I'll need to know where the properties are, their conditions, and the people working on them. There are two open datasets that provide extremely valuable information. The first dataset is the Directory of Federal Real Property, published from the Treasury Board of Canada Secretariat. 
It has detailed information of the federally owned properties, their custodian, parcel, structure, tenants, and so on. The second data set is the Government Electronic Directory Services, a listing of over 200,000 federal government employees and their location of work. It is also an open data set published by the federal government. There are thousands of rows in each of the data set. It's a lot to unpack and hard to make sense of. When we map them out by location, this is what we have. You are seeing a 3D map that shows all federal real properties and the public servants reporting to each side. You can pan around across Canada and zoom in, looking at a scale of your choice. What we did here is simply map the two open datasets on a 3D base map and performed an analysis to sum up public servants by location. Let's take a closer look at one property. In one click, we can see the departments working on this property, how many employees are reporting here and who they are. We're able to drill down to detailed information like this by location. In an emergency where several sites are at risk, this map can quickly pull up information on the affected properties, departments, and staff. Mapping out data not only allows you to drill down information by location, it also enables easy reporting across properties. For example, we want to find out where are the workplaces for Fisheries and Oceans Canada, or DFO. We can do a search and bring up the properties that they operate in. We can even put together a dashboard that reports by provinces and territories. So far, we have been working with just the two open datasets. An advance of having a mapping platform is you can bring other data in to answer questions like, how many buildings are within 10 kilometers of earthquakes over magnitude 4 in the last 50 years? We can bring the National Earthquake Database published by Natural Resources Canada for this analysis. Grounded in scientific data, our new insight of earthquake risks can inform decisions on infrastructure investment planning. We can add the global solar atlas data from the World Bank Group to understand which properties have greater solar potential. We can add the 2021 Canadian Census data from StatsCan to see areas of fastest population growth, so the long-term human resource strategy is informed by locational demographics change. By now, you have an idea of how the geographic approach helps you integrate disparate data sets bring new insights and spark new questions. You can expand the use cases by injecting your own organizational data. Also, there's a wealth of information out there that governments, research institutions, and community groups made available in geospatial format. This is step number one to adopt the geographic approach, using maps to link your disparate data sets. Step number two, is to embed the geographic approach into your operational workflow. It is game-changing for efficiency, accuracy, and cost. When your assets are mapped, your fuel crew can have access to the data from mobile devices wherever they are. They're showing up at a site with situational awareness. They know exactly what asset is where and the last captured condition of it. Mobile technology not only sends situational awareness to the team's fingertips, but also enables them to update asset data from the field in a digital, error-proof format. This workflow enabled by GIS mobile technology creates trust and efficiency in three ways. Number one, you have a single source of truth across different groups. With a digital credential, everyone can have access to view the authoritative data. Number two, this single source of truth is dynamic and stays current because the data custodians, in many ways your operational teams, can make updates directly from the field using GIS mobile technology. Number three, your data is report ready the moment it is entered. At the time of capture, the data conforms to standards because they are entered in standardized digital forms. In a few clicks, you can confidently pull together key status for a report. Not only data collection is sped up, Taking the geographic approach is changing the scale of operations and flexibility to pivot. Let's look at an example. A situation came up 
on the real properties you manage. There's substantial flooding from the water main breakdown. A few facilities are impacted. More will be if the situation continues. You called a vac truck. You want to identify the source of the problem and have a handle on the situation before the vac truck is on site. In your GIS, data shows there are 30 valves in the flooded area. Half have been inspected and exercised in the last six months. Others haven't been serviced in the past two years. You're sending out a field team to canvas all the unserviced valves first. They know exactly where to go based on their mobile app. That saves a lot of frustration. As the field crew canvass each valve, they can update the information live from the field, so the rest of the team knows which ones are inspected and are good. In the meantime, you need to communicate the situation with staff in the impacted buildings and at-risk buildings. Sharing real-time situational awareness is paramount, given changes can happen fast. A digital map with live data updated from the field provides a powerful and effective way to communicate. Stakeholders can quickly tell which critical assets are under threat and what other assets are next to be impacted if the situation continues. You'll be able to coordinate the evacuation plan, route to leave, and rendezvous points if there are large employee groups on site. Incorporating geospatial technology into operation changes how field work is done. Staff no longer need to return to the office to search through files. Progress of the complex situation is updated and reported from the field in real time. Various stakeholders have access to the same live information to better coordinate their work. The process to set up the mobile workflow is short and can be pre-configured. During the COVID pandemic, it took City of Burnaby six hours to configure a mobile project for collecting newly installed COVID signs in all the parks. With tweaks and additions, these mobile project setups are reusable. Many organizations have configured multiple operational workflows for condition assessment and preventative maintenance programs. The geographic approach helps you see your data and transform operational efficiency, but its deepest value comes from the collaboration it enables. The collaboration is enabled by three fundamental characteristics of GIS. Trust. Data standards, digital credentials, and data capture methods create trusted data at the source. Flexibility. Decentralized data architecture allows scalable and interoperable information to be connected and analyzed. Inclusivity. Multiple stakeholder groups are provided with tailored information products to address their specific business challenges while being connected to the evolving bigger picture and supported in collaboration with others. In big projects, when multiple contracts are happening in parallel, GIS brings together information islands to form a bird's eye view of fast moving parts to avoid blind spots or surprises. GIS also connects operation with capital planning. So data collected in operation feeds into investment decision making and decisions made are tracked and monitored in operations. Let's look at three use cases. First one is about capital investment planning. Do you know someone live on a street where the sidewalk was dug up and replaced in year one and dug up again in year two for water pipe replacement and then in a few years again for fiber to be put in? The projects were planned and executed in isolation because the team in charge of sidewalks wasn't aware of the water pipe or the telecom asset plan. University of Saskatchewan pioneered a spatially enabled method for their asset capital planning. They used GIS to visualize assets, both above ground and underground, so they can generate better capital planning estimates. Instead of prioritizing assets that need to be invested, the geospatial approach enables them to prioritize where needs to be invested. For right-of-way rehabilitation plan, that means having a unified view of the above ground and subsurface assets and their stage in life cycle. The second use case is about standardizing and streamlining project processes. 
A $7 billion renovation project at the San Francisco airport uses GIS as the window of entry to all their infrastructure information, including building information modeling, or BIM. The integration of BIM and GIS provides both accuracy and ease of access for designers, engineers, and the operational teams from the very beginning of the project all the way to the end. Bringing various information together in GIS helps the project team open up conversations, build consensus rapidly, get buy-ins throughout the process, and constantly align amongst all stakeholders. What GIS enables is a collaboration journey. The last use case I want to share is about emergency response. For a large complex of real properties, Addresses are insufficient for 911 responders to navigate quickly. Having an internal application that shows all facilities, routing options, access points, and even 3D floor plans is invaluable to the first responders and communication coordinators. Prioritized facilities can be identified in the plan for restoration triage. Live traffic and weather data can be brought in to coordinate evacuation. The spatial information of your properties and assets become a base map of the situational awareness for all stakeholders in the imperative moments. There are many more situations of accelerating collaboration using mapping products than the three I've just shared. The message here is the geographic approach is far more than technology or data. It is about building a common ground for various groups with different expertise, mandates, and expectations. We covered a lot on how the geographic approach can help you gain core competency in managing real properties. Remember to treat your data as a critical asset. Mapping them out helps you quickly understand the gaps and patterns. Inject mobile GIS technology into your operations is an efficiency game changer. It means sending asset data to the fingertips of your field crew and making it easy for them to update the source of truth from the field. Last and the most transformational step, sharing your data. Share them in intuitive ways. Provide a live and holistic common view for your operational teams, capital planning teams, communication teams, executives, and all the other business groups. This common operating picture saves you time and money, reduces risks, and enables a safer, more resilient, and more inclusive environment. Embracing new methods can feel overwhelming. But remember, your journey to efficiency and clarity in property management begins with just one step. Start small. Choose a single project or process that could benefit from the geographic approach. This manageable first step is a practical way to see the benefits for yourself without overcommitting. We've seen firsthand how transformative this approach can be. Organizations just like yours have made incredible strides in managing their assets more effectively, reducing risks, and making informed decisions that save time and money. We understand the challenges you face and are here to support you every step of the way. Reach out to us at any time. Our team in Esri Canada is ready to help you start your journey with a geographic approach today.